William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Exercise can be beneficial or it can kill you. One guy I know walked himself to death. But still it figured, seeing that the walk he took was the last mile. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig. Confidential Investigator. Barry Craig speaking. In these supersonic times with the great wide world shrinking to the size of a pretzel, crime, uh, crime is global. Chase a hood across New Jersey and you're likely to catch him in Botany Bay or in Algeria or Madagascar. In view of all this, the cablegram on my desk one merry morning didn't surprise me a bit. It had been dispatched from mid-ocean. The dateline read, S.S. Shalimar. The text of it said, Arriving Friday, 6 p.m. Please see to arrangements for armored truck at pier for safe transfer of the priceless Barbary tomb relics. You are highly recommended by an official of the Cairo police. Signed, Oscar Melamed. Priceless cargo of anything generally brings out the worst in people. And this one was no exception. Hello? Mr. Craig? And this is? I'm Lisa Barnum. I'd like to discuss something with you. Something extremely important. Capital letter B? Capital letter B? B for the Barbary collection. Why, you're uncanny. Yeah. I learned the art of divination from one note Oleo Myers. One note Oleo Myers? Yeah, a trombone player in the T-Bone Casino Philharmonic. Go ahead. Finish your joke. Oleo always knew on Friday he was going to get canned Saturday. Can we meet and talk as soon as possible? Well, why not? I'll come to your place. No, I'll come to your place. But I'd much rather. I prefer women in their natural habitat, doll. It uh, helps cement a truer understanding. <laughs> Lisa Barnum lived in a building that had a taxidermist in the downstairs store. While I looked for her doorbell in the row of eight bell pushers, a stuffed chimpanzee came out of the taxidermist to stick a gun in my ribs. Looking for somebody? Yes, I am. Lisa Barnum. You're calling on her. I confess. Then you're with me from now on. Your gun says. My gun says. You see that green and gold job over there? Mmm, stazzy. Well, take a spin in it. You and me. Vertically? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> oh, you mean sitting up. You got quite a grasp of the English. No, no. <laughs> you won't be sitting up. I won't? You'll be laying down. Uh, turn to a side a little, huh? Uh, this much? Yeah, yeah. I like hitting them on the side of the ear. Every man to his taste. No yelling now when you get it. I'll try to be a gentleman about it. We don't want to be <coughs> scaring people. <laughs> I came to with my left ear as big as Dumbo the Elephants. I tried stretching my legs to see how the old blood was circulating. And I knocked over what sounded like a garbage can. I reached a hand out in the pitch dark to get the feel of my surroundings. Almost strangled a cat. I tried getting my bearings by scent. My lungs began to choke up from what smelled like a poison gas barrage. <coughs> <coughs> I hate saying the obvious, but where am I? In a cellar. And where are you in this blackout? Over here, sitting on a box. Why? Why not? Now that stumps me. <coughs> Say, where's that mustard gas blowing from? <laughs> you really disapprove of my cologne. When I get it in lethal doses. 
How do you feel? Mainly perplexed. Perplexed? Oh, the answers are simple, really. They always are when you know them. So inform me. Here? You know a better location? Mertz's drugstore, just down the block. You'll want penicillin ointment on that ear before it infects. Here, I'll help you up. I've always relied on the kindness of women, Lisa. You no doubt are Lisa Bonham. Yes, I am Lisa Bonham. In Mertz's, I got one ear swabbed and taped while Lisa bent my other ear. I saw you assaulted on my stoop. I was upstairs at the front window. What's your floor? Second. I ran down to the street to see you thrown into that man's automobile. That man being? Why, I don't know. I hailed a taxi cab and followed you. Why? Why? What would you have me do? Well, yell police good and loud. If you were really alarmed about me. Uh, however, go on with it. You were carried into that cellar and abandoned there. When it was safe, I... You joined me? Yes. Oh, my heroine. Hmm, you are an irritating man. Time out while I check through my pockets. Well? Is anything missing? Uh, something is. Your wallet? No. Then, uh... A cablegram I got this morning. A cablegram? Don't play dumb. All right, I won't. A cablegram telling you where and when Oscar Melamed would arrive. Oscar Melamed and Precious Cargo. The man who assaulted you was after the information. Obviously, and he's got it. And what are you after, baby? It's a long story. Well, try condensing it into a few words. All right. Our family name was Barbary before it was changed to Barnum. I get the emphasis. My uncle, Dexter Barbary, was an Egyptologist. He spent his entire mature life in search of tomb relics. Uh, you make him sound dead. He vanished without a trace two years ago. Well, where was he then? In Alexandria, Egypt. My last contact with him was a letter he sent me. I, I have the letter here, if you'd care to read it. Oh, later. But meanwhile, you briefed me on the contents of it. The letter states that he'd come upon a priceless collection of Byzantine tomb relics. That he was registering them in his name, Barbary, as the Barbary Collection. And? And period. And of Uncle Dexter? Yes. And you suspect foul play? I believe he was murdered and that his collection was stolen. I see. Are you the last known living Barbary? If Uncle Dexter is dead, yes, I am. Uh, finish what's on your mind. The tomb relics rightfully belong to me. So, sue for them. Sue? <laughs> Should I really be so proper, Mr. Craig? Only sue the man who caused my uncle's murder? The accused being my current client. Oscar Melamed. Well, now, answer me this. How did you know the Barbary collection was on board the SS Shalimar, en route to here? Uh, I... I don't care to disclose my sources of information. Then you can never be my client. Why can't I be? Secretive clients worry me. I always imagine they're taking my head size. Taking your head size? So the dunce cap will fit nice and snug. Friday, 6 p.m., found me on the pier where the S.S. Shalimar had docked as ordered. And also as ordered, I had an armored truck hired and standing by for the safe and orderly transfer of the Barbary Collection. A guy in a red oriental fez who had introduced himself as Oscar Melamed stood with me, watching two giant-sized crates being loaded on the armored truck. I am grateful for your very conscientious services, Mr. Craig. Uh, repeat that to yourself when you get my bill. Now, when the collection's all loaded, where does it go? I have given your driver written instructions. Don't call him my driver. I got the armored car service out of a telephone directory. I make no guarantees. The collection is to be stored in a vault. I have already made the arrangements. What's it all worth, Melamed, in round figures? Uh, two, three hundred thousand dollars. Well, that explains the buzzards buzzing around. <laughs> Every thief in the world has plans to steal a Barbary collection. 
Well, we've got at least one native hood around, eager to liven up the competition. One? Mm-hmm. <laughs> there will be 20, Mr. Craig. You will see. Well, the junk's loaded and bolted in, Melamed. You want me to ride on the truck? No. Be a lot smarter if I did. The driver has his instructions. Let him go. We will remain here. Well, you're sure casual with 300 Gs, Melamed. I do not want you injured, Mr. Craig. That is why you remain here with me. Now, just what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Oh, that sounds like there's something up your sleeve. Some nice hunk of oriental cunning. <laughs> Where is your police headquarters, Mr. Craig? Raymond and Sixth. Why? Let us go there together and await the report of the daring theft. Theft of the Barbary Collection? Yes, the theft of the Barbary Collection. <laughs> <laughs> At police headquarters on Raymond and Sixth, we haunted the teletype machine. Completing our trio was a sallow-cheeked sergeant named Joe Tuesday, who looked as if crime gave him an acid stomach. I've had dizzy characters popping into headquarters before. Hey, look it. Look it? What the ticker tape is saying. Huh? Oh, oh. Armored truck seized by gang in machine gun raid at corners of Beaver and Howard. Driver and guard kidnapped. Order statewide alert. Well, you're a champ prognosticator, Melamed. With the hijacked armored car problem in the laps of the Metropolitan Police, Melamed and yours truly went for a spin in my jalopy. The joyride was his idea. Pier 17, Hoboken. You choose the proper approach, Mr. Craig. But first, you have an important thing to attend to. Like? Like the automobile behind us. See? In your mirror. Yeah. We're being trailed, all right. An old New York custom. Familiar job, the one behind us. Green and gold convertible. You have seen it before? I'm getting a nostalgic twinge in my ear. The bum one. Well, shall we tangle with them or lose them? Lose them, of course. Fasten your safety belt. Before the green and gold job behind us gave up a hopeless chase, they sent out a signal of defeat. They are shooting at us. We're out of range, Malamed. And get your fingers out of my knee. But I'm nervous. Who isn't? Now wave a last fun goodbye to the boys. Alone at last on Pier 17, Hoboken, a banana boat was whistling hello to the USA. Ah, the Susie Q. Well, why should a banana freighter give you that radiant glow of happy health, Melamed? Can't you guess, Mr. Craig? Yeah, I can at that. Sitting midst mountains of bananas aboard the Susie Q is a big piece of ancient Egypt. A Barbary collection. Dummy crates aboard the SS Shalimar... The real McCoy aboard the Suzy Q. <laughs> a necessary subterfuge. I am sorry to have used you as a... Uh, decoy is the word. It's okay with me, so long as justice triumphs. But is justice triumphing, Melamed? I... I do not understand your question. I've got a suspicious nature. But you trust your own judgment. Yeah, I do that. And no offense intended, mind you, but you personally don't come off too good in my judgment. You have doubts about my integrity? Swine that I am, yes. The ways of the East are perhaps strange to the West. $300,000 spells bonanza even in the Hindustani tongue. But I am the owner of the Barbary collection. I've heard other points of view on that. Other points of view? Yeah. A doll named Lisa Barnum. Lisa Barnum Barbary. Niece of Dexter Barbary. Oh, I see. Now I understand the reason for your suspicion. It's only one of my reasons. Dexter Barbary was a guest in my country, an eccentric expatriate. What do you mean eccentric? A better word would be fool. 
an amateur Egyptologist and an uninformed one. The man was a vagrant, a mere professional beggar. But he registered a collection as the Barbary Collection. The one now aboard the Susie Q there. A fraudulent registration, Mr. Craig. Barbary was in my employ as a gardener and chauffeur. He registered possessions belonging to me, Oscar Melamed. I have affidavits. Oh, uh, that's your story. Where is Barbary now? I can only repeat rumors. Like? His death was reported. He had contracted a disease in the Kilimanjaro Ranges. Kilimanjaro? What was Barbary doing in Hemingway's private ballpark? Looking for fossil specimens. Now, if you will tell me, what is your fee? Paying me off here and now, huh? Yes, Mr. Craig. You have been useful, but now you are useless. How much? Uh, peel off a grand, Sahib, in New York coin. I took the grand and copped off, but I didn't go too far from my ex-client. I was on his tail, automotively speaking, all the way from the Susie Q to a warehouse in Newark, where the Barbary collection was unloaded and stored. I made careful note of the address. In my office the next morning, business began to boom. The chimpanzee who loved toying with my left ear, he had a gun in each hand. Hey, there's only one of me, Buster. I carry two guns to balance the weight. I don't want one shoulder down lower than the other. Oh, I see. Remind yourself of something, Craig. Meaning? Where you went with Egypt when you shook my car yesterday. Oh, Pier 17, Hoboken. And then to where? I don't know. I got paid off and canned at the pier. Baloney. Slice it, please. A smart guy like you. Would know where $300,000 worth of loot is stored. Yeah, would know. Uh, mind if I pry into your character a little? What befoozles you about me? How a creep straight out of a Manhattan sewer got himself in the middle of a Cairo-Egypt conspiracy. <laughs> I got a friend on the lamb in Egypt. Maxim Odessa, three-time loser, so he can't ever come home. He sent me a letter. About the collection? Yeah, about. Then uh, you're freelancing. I got a few pool players in with me. On your way out, surrender your guns to Sergeant Joe Tuesday. Joe Tuesday? Where is he? In the lobby, running the elevator, on the back stairs, and on the roof. You know what an octopus Joe Tuesday is. You got cup staked out, huh? For your exclusive benefit, Buster... I'm a guy who takes pride in his ears. So I had sticks and stones. Oh, blast my way out. You'll make an unbeautiful corpse. Exit smiling, buster. Imagine me walking into a cop's stakeout. Me, Ponjo. You're beginning to bore me. Skidoo now. <laughs> After Ponjo, the 10th Avenue Arab, came Lisa, in top form, throwing curves at me. I thought over what you said. And? I decided to take your advice. And? <laughs> I engaged an attorney, the firm of Brendel, Kirtle, and Damhauser. You're suing Oscar Melamed? For the Barbary collection. We've already served papers. A summons and complaint. And a restraining order. Melamed is not to take the collection out of the country without consent of the court. What adjudication are you after? Sale of the collection and the proceeds of it to me. Three hundred grand, huh? Mm, approximately. Lots of mink and banana royals. What about the alleged murder of your dear Uncle Dexter? There isn't much I can do about a murder done in Egypt or elsewhere. Yes, there would be the jurisdictional problem... Now, uh, you want to inspire trust and confidence in me? Yes, so very much, Barry. Mm, I wondered when you'd begin to coo Barry at me. You wondered? Yeah. A doll finds her lie is showing. She brings sex appeal into the breach. It's not as old as sin, baby. It's older. What do I have to do to prove my utter good faith? 
prove you really had an amateur Egyptologist uncle named Dexter Barbary. Prove I... You don't think I... I made him up? Didn't you? Why, why, if this isn't... Mr. Craig, do you often have whams on your head? Only when my feet ache. Let's talk about the morning's news, huh? The, uh, Barbary collections on every front page. So it is. So what? Oh, million-dollar news break, figuring the space and pictures. And here, a feature interview with Oscar Melamed. How his oriental ingenuity baffled every raffles from Tibet to Hoboken, New Jersey. But it all does qualify as big news. Or does it mean something else to your warped mind? It does, doll. But I won't tell you. Not until I tell it to Oscar Melamed first. Now, uh, try sitting on my lap. I'll toss you out of the window. Well, well you're nothing but a, a stick of wood. Oh, I'll just bet you tell that to all the boys. <laughs> Melamed had company when I found him. Company just about to leave. Distinguished, middle-aged, black Homburg. The type American tycoon with nervous money and a collector's itch. I caught their parting words. Then I'll assume it's agreed, Mr. Melamed. We are in complete harmony, Mr. Cartwright. You drive a hard bargain, but uh, <laughs> I can afford it. Good day. Good day, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, uh, tell me, uh... Which Cartwright is it, the, the banker or the steel baron? Mr. Cartwright is an oil. Marinated in your special brand of oil. Why have you come here? Putting it bluntly to stymie a bunco game. A bunco game? <laughs> now, what absurdity. The trash you're trying to palm off as treasure. You call the Barbary Collection trash? I do. And all the hijinks and publicity around it is only a build-up for susceptible suckers. What you're really selling them is a collection of newspaper headlines... The publicity has him so dazzled he won't remember to inspect the merchandise. Oh, I see you've stopped laughing. Okay, if I bore you with the details of your fraud... I'm listening. Thanks. Lisa Barnum's in with you, a full partner in the swindle. Her phony uncle routine, and now the lawsuit against you, is just more stage dressing. Like that armored car and the two fighters. All more bait for suckers. And the gangsters? Are they also full partners with me? No, no. The mob was on its own. Flies around honey, or what they thought was honey. But all grist for your scheme. The shenanigans of the mob got you more juicy headlines. Helped make trash really look like treasure. Now, uh, you going to take a rest gracefully? Or are you the type who blows his fez? <laughs> Despite these circumstances, Mr. Craig... <laughs> I am forced to admire you. Well, thanks for saying it. It's what I live for. The goodwill and admiration of my clients. After all, man doesn't work for bread alone. You have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Sweet Larceny, was written by John Robert. Next week, it's the strange story of Corpse on the Town, about which Barry Craig has this to say. In Corpse on the Town, death rewrites the script of a Broadway show when a bachelor producer becomes a widower in two easy stages, marriage and murder. The National Broadcasting Company has just brought you an NBC Radio Network production with William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Directed by Andrew C. Love, our cast included Edith Terry, Lou Krugman, Jan Arlen, and Jonathan Hope. Join Groucho Marx for You Bet Your Life tonight on the NBC Radio Network.